Good morning my dear students I Sir Sylvester de Souza welcome you all to the geography lecture of the 9th standard Students in the previous lesson while studying endogenetic movements we had learned about internal movements Now my dear students we have to first of all know that we divide the movements into two different types first one is internal what you have already studied and the other one my dear students is the external movement now in the internal movements we have primary and secondary landforms which are formed meaning to say that due to internal movements we can have the formation of primary and secondary landforms but my dear students due to external movements that is movements that are occurring above the surface of the earth we can have landforms that are tertiary that is the tertiary landforms now what you mean first by primary and secondary landforms we have studied about this we have studied about continent building movements in the previous lecture we have studied how mountains are formed block mountains fold mountains then we have seen how plateaus are formed and we have seen how plains are formed okay so we have seen all these various kinds of primary and secondary landforms that are formed due to internal movements that are occurring in the earth's surface now my dear students in this lecture we are going to study about the tertiary landforms that is how sand dunes are formed how valleys are formed okay so we are going to study about all of them now what you mean firstly by primary and secondary landforms landforms formed on the earth's surface as a result of internal movements are called as primary and secondary landforms so landforms my dear students that are formed because of the internal earth movements that is endogenetic movements they are called as primary and secondary landforms see we have got examples like the plateaus over here okay which have steep slopes and their tops are flat they do not have a peak on top okay then we have got continent building how the continents were formed i explained to you all that also okay then we have got how plains are formed this way how mountains are formed we have studied about block mountains and fold mountains we have studied about the himalayas okay so we have studied about all these things in the previous lesson now my dear students in this lesson we are going to basically study about tertiary landforms okay and what are these tertiary landforms they are landforms which are formed because of external processes that is processes occurring outside the earth's surface and what are those processes the processes are like weathering erosion transportation and deposition okay so we have seen we are going to see all this okay we are going to see all this in the coming chapters okay and then they are also uh, the primary and secondary landforms give way to tertiary landforms so it is first the primary and the secondary landforms that are formed and after that due to weathering due to erosion due to transportation and deposition we have got tertiary landforms that are created okay i'll be explaining to you all each one of this okay so there is no need of getting confused okay so we have got these kind of landforms that are formed we have got valleys okay we have got deltas we have got sand dunes in the deserts and then we have got u shaped valleys okay you can see this u shape over here okay and we also have got v shaped valleys okay so we get all these various landforms occurring due to the processes okay and which processes they are called as exogenetic processes we have divided them into two parts part 1 and part 2 okay so first we are going to start with part 1 in lesson number 3 now what do you mean by exogenetic processes okay let us see the definition the external processes working on the earth's surface that lead to various type of land formation are known as exogenetic processes so what is the meaning of that that means they are first of all external processes that are occurring on the earth's surface okay so we can see them they are occurring on the earth surface this is very important on the earth surface okay so they are occurring on the earth surface that is above the earth's surface and they lead to formation of new landforms so a new landform can be formed 
because of these processes okay because of these external processes and these external processes are called to be known as the exogenetic processes on the other hand my dear students in the previous lesson you have studied endogenetic processes these are processes that are happening below the earth's surface so they are happening somewhere down and for example that is given to you all is the shifting of tectonic plates so we have studied about tectonic plates while studying earthquakes and how there can be a shifting of the tectonic plates leading to these kind of processes so is it clear my dear students what you mean by endogenetic and what you mean by exogenetic now let us move straight away to the textbook what does the textbook say many landforms are formed due to internal movements so i don't need to explain this i have already given that many processes occurring on the earth's surface also lead to formation or degradation of landform continuously now remember my dear students that is because of processes what are happening on the earth surface i am emphasizing again and again on the word on okay on the earth surface also lead to formation or degradation so there can be two things my dear students there can be a formation something new can be formed or something can be degraded something can be even become less okay now in this lesson we are going to study about the exogenetic or the external processes okay so we are going to learn about the external processes occurring in the earth's surface okay and because of them what kind of new landforms are going to be formed okay we are also going to see what are the new landforms that are going to be formed because of these external processes okay now external processes occur because of the forces working on the earth's surface so there are a few forces my dear students forces is nothing but we can say energy or something that is leading okay something that leads to the formation of something new landforms okay so there are some forces some energy that is working and now what are these energy if you see in geography we have got basically three of them okay first one is solar energy that is the sun then gravitational force that is something which is pulling towards the earth okay we know that there is a magnetic force within the earth surface whatever you throw on top automatically comes down and that is because of the gravitational force and also kinetic energy you have studied about this in science what is kinetic energy it is nothing but uh, a thing which is set in motion something which is moving okay so there are all these three energies which are there okay which are occurring on the earth surface due to which we can get either formation or degradation of new landforms is it clear so because of these three that is the solar sun gravitation that is the magnetic force of the earth and kinetic that is the thing that sets anything into motion okay so because of these kind of things we can have new landforms which are formed or new landforms okay which get degraded which get lost okay because of the processes now this is the entire lesson for you all in short that is exogenetic processes external processes so the type of exogenetic processes we have got weathering we have got erosion we have got transportation and we have got deposition okay so i'll be dealing with each of them in the coming lectures okay that is in the lecture ahead then because of them i had showed you valleys i have showed you about sand dunes i had showed you deltas and u shaped in the pre in the previous part of this lecture okay and this three forces also what is there we have discussed that is gravitation solar and kinetic so this is the entire lecture what you are going to see in short and also in the entire lesson my dear students okay now this is one of the textbook image that you have that is exfoliation of the dome shaped hill okay so we have got a process called as exfoliation which is a mechanical type of weathering i'll tell you that about that also what you mean by this in the lecture ahead now i had told you about these four things external processes weathering so you can see weathering over here okay what is the meaning of weathering i'll be explaining to you all in the coming slides okay then what you mean by erosion i'll, I'll be explaining to you all so this is what erosion can be called as then transportation that is sand dunes you have seen the same image that is sand is transported from one place to the other deposition again the same thing when the river is flowing the mud or the soil from the mountain is brought down the foot of the hill and then deposited in the Uh, river beds okay so these soil what is coming is coming from the top of the mountains but because of the river what is flowing they carry this soil along with them and bring them and deposit them along the banks of the 
river okay so these are the various things that is there erosion weathering transportation and deposition now again from your textbook something very important do you know that is landforms formed on the earth surface as a result of internal movements are called as primary and land primary and secondary landforms so i have already discussed with you all this in the right beginning of the lesson okay and because of them continents are formed mountains are formed plateaus and plains are formed so i had explained to you all due to these movements occurring in the interior of the earth that is endogenetic movements what we see we have got primary and secondary landforms and the example of there is are continent building movements mountains that is fold and block mountains then we have got plateaus we have got plates etc okay next paragraph we'll continue because of the external processes like weathering erosion transportation and deposition i had just showed you all all this over here weathering erosion transposition and uh, deposition okay so primary and secondary landforms that are formed over here they give way or due to that due to these four things a new landform is formed and that is called as tertiary landform and I already had explained to you all that is valleys sand dunes deltas and u shaped valleys now my dear students what you mean by weathering and erosion i had showed you in the image what now what do you exactly understand by weathering and what do you understand by erosion okay so weathering processes at or near the earth surface that causes rocks and minerals to break down are called as weathering so it is nothing but it is a process in which the rocks or minerals on the earth surface are broken okay the minerals what are there the rocks what are there okay they are broken down okay they are broken due to energy i told you that is what you have studied either due to the sun heat that is solar energy then either due to wind sometime they are breaking okay that is kinetic energy so due to these energies what happens certain time rocks break my dear students okay now erosion what do you mean by erosion the process of removing the earth materials from their original sites through weathering and transport okay now what do you understand by erosion first weathering occurs that is a rock is broken now when a rock breaks there are few particles which are very very small now these small particles what are there they have fall down near the rock but when there is heavy rainfall okay when there is heavy rainfall these small particles are washed by the running water that is flowing and they are carried away from their original site where was their original site near the rock which was broken so they are carried away from there and then my dear students they are transported by either water or by wind and they are taken to a new place say for example wind what you had seen sand dunes okay what sand is there in one place they are eroded and how they are eroded they are eroded from one place to the other place and the reason for their erosion is nothing but wind okay my dear students so we have got certain examples of erosion over here see here one is wind the other one is running water so you can see this river which is flowing over here this river what is flowing my dear students what does it do certain time it crosses its boundary and while crossing its boundary it destroys the roads it destroys buildings what are uh, there nearby its bank okay then glaciers you know what are glaciers ice big big ice um, mountains what are there okay when there is heat at the foot of the hill the upper part of the mountain start getting melted and the entire ice mountain starts rolling down okay the mountain and they are known as the glaciers then we have got sea water you might have seen plenty of times near the marine drive near gateway of india the sea water enters on the road okay and then they sometime bring uh, material from the sea and they deposit it on the road sometime plastic bags sometime dead fishes so they carry all these things okay and ground water also is sometimes responsible now in this one image my dear students you can clearly understand what you mean by weathering and what you mean by erosion okay now first i will explain to you all what you mean by weathering over here 
now my dear students you can see that this rock is there on top now when you had seen the definition you had seen that it is anything that causes this rock to break now what is causing you can see these raindrops okay so these are raindrops which are occurring on the earth okay and due to that along with that there is even wind which is blowing so this rock is broken now this rock is broken and fallen over here as you can see but what happens when it starts raining very heavily okay this is brought down the sediment that is the small particles of the rock are brought down by the running water by the water which is running due to heavy rainfall they sometime bring these sediments from here on top to the foot of the hill okay and this is called as erosion so understood what you mean by weathering and erosion next my dear students we have got this image in chemical weathering called as oxidation and biological weathering also what is there for y'all okay again one more example of chemical weathering one more example again of biological weathering an example of chemical weathering so we have seen all these various examples we will see this in the lesson ahead as you study the lesson okay so now my dear students let us straight away enter into the geographical explanation breaking or weakening of rocks is a natural phenomenon so my dear student breaking of rocks and weakening of rocks okay both of them are natural phenomenon they are occurring by nature okay because these forces that are there that is solar energy kinetic energy gravitational force okay all this is continuously there on the earth's surface okay it is called as weathering weathering can be of three types now we have said about weathering now again we are going to divide weathering into three types over here the first one is mechanical weathering the next one my dear students is chemical weathering and the last one is biological weathering mechanical weathering is also referred to be as physical weathering now we are going to see how it is occurring in arid climate that is in dry climate okay mechanical weathering occurs while in humid climate that is where it is a uh, bit of moisture is present in the air chemical weathering occurs while biological weathering what is there it is occurring because of living organisms now if you see closely at this entire weathering you will see that climate plays a very very important role at least in two that is mechanical weathering and chemical weathering so chemical weathering occurs where the climate is humid okay that is where there is moisture present where there is water present okay and mechanical weathering my dear students on the other hand occurs in dry areas okay so mechanical weathering in dry areas and chemical weathering in humid areas whereas biological occurs due to living organisms maybe due to ants okay due to rats due to rabbits okay so that is weathering occurring due to nature okay due to trees you can see this in this image over here okay so here it is dry okay so you can see mechanical weathering occurring over here which is also termed to be as physical weathering next you can see chemical weathering occurring over here okay you can see chemical weathering over here and then last you can see biological weathering so in all the three my dear students you can see that there is breaking or weakening of rock so if you look carefully you will see that there is breaking or weakening of rocks in all the three kinds of weathering be it mechanical be it chemical or be it biological okay we can see this again in one more image over here okay that is mechanical chemical and biological okay we can see all the three again over here now my dear students we we'll start first with mechanical weathering now there is an example given for mechanical weathering in your textbook okay now what you have to do you have to take a onion okay everybody will be having it in the house you can do it right now also you can pause the video and go and get a onion and see okay then cut the onion in the middle okay my dear students once you have observed okay once you have cut the onion sorry then you can observe the parts okay of the onion how it is there in the interior and then try to remove each and every layer of this skin okay try to remove each and every layer of the skin now let us see what you will notice you will notice that just as we can remove each and every outer layer of the onion similarly in the nature rock undergoes such process so my dear student just now what you had seen for the onion after cutting the onion the same thing my dear students occurs in nature 
okay the exposed part that is the part which is out okay the outermost layer of the rock is exposed to heat there is more of heat present in the outermost layer let me show you all the image you will understand it in a better way my dear students just now you cut the onion okay after the after cutting the onion you had seen what is there the same layer see you can see it in nature exactly the same what is there in the onion now why does it occur because this outer layer what is there my dear student this outer layer you can see this layer is exposed to heat okay now because of heat what is there in the outer layer the inner layer is comparatively cooler so what happens the inner layer does not get harmed only what happens is the outer layer gets harmed now as a result the outer layer starts to fall apart from the main rock okay so you can see this over here the outermost layer was very big this rock was very very big but slowly the one one layer of the rocks started getting exposed to the heat and started breaking off started getting exposed to the heat and started getting breaking off so this is a continuous process and this is a long process and then what you see over here you can see the innermost layer over here so this is the innermost layer so finally you get this kind of a uh, look a look like the onion okay and this my dear students is called as exfoliation okay so this is known as exfoliation okay this entire process what is there of the onion okay now here again one more image you can see see you can see it over here clearly this is the innermost part of the earth and then you can see the layers what are there over here in this also image you can see how the layers are there of the rock okay so the outermost layer has got damaged you can see one more over here in your textbook this image you can see it in your textbook okay so you can see all these images which are occurring in the earth surface okay or on the earth surface due to mechanical weathering now my dear students again mechanical weathering also occurs due to certain reasons okay we have seen that we have divided into mechanical chemical and biological but there are some causes because of which mechanical weather weathering occurs okay now let us see what are the various causes due to which mechanical weathering is occurring so the first one my dear students is temperature the next one is frost and the last one is crystal growth along with that we have got release of pressure and water so my dear students we have we can see all these over here okay we can see temperature we can see frost we can see crystal growth release of pressure and water so all these are various causes of mechanical weathering now my dear students this is quite important therefore this i will be starting in the next lecture afresh okay in the next lecture i'll be teaching you all the various causes of mechanical weathering so today my dear students we have got a very nice introduction so i request you all to go to this introduction very carefully okay there is no homework for you all for today but you have to go through this lecture very very nicely because this is the base in which you will be understanding the remaining part of the lesson okay so that's all for today's lecture stay home my dear students stay safe take care of yourself your families god bless you all thank you